Finally, G-Shock listened and in February the brand launched the new GM2100C, surprisingly on a textile strap. They made this practical military G-Shock which ticks some extra boxes compared to the previous version. Because the brand finally decided to be more inclusive, solving the accessibility problem of the Cassiok. So the GMB2100 issue was fixed. First topic, why do we care about the Casio? Well, we care about Casio and we care about our childhood and the nostalgia for the vintage Casios. But we also care about the octagonal design, which came exactly at the right time when everyone got bored by the Rolex designs, switching to the Gerald Genta designs to the integrated bracelet concepts. The Casio concept came up somewhere at the beginning of 2019, a new design which was very fast adopted by the people. Firstly because of the affordability of the brand, twice because of the well-sized concept, knowing in general the huge proportions of the G-Shocks, and last because of the octagonal design which turned to be a good platform for modding in time. These are facts, nothing to debate here. As a G-Shock evolution, the GAGM series is part of the design language of the square. Because the square has the same design attributes and the same number of facets, but kind of squeezed vertically. And then when G-Shock launched the first Casio version, they came up with the GA2100 model, followed by a premium GM series which was very welcomed as well. I mean, I made a video about the GM series, but people came to the video not for the watch, not for the specs, not for the story. They came up for the orange strap. That bloody orange strap. I was asked over 100 times where to get that strap. But the main point to discuss and to understand what was the actual pain with the Casio concept. It's simple, very often G-Shock bypasses the accessibility factor, which is a must today if you want to make a popular watch, you have to please a wider audience and you have to be compliant from the contrasts and proportions as well. A very good example was the pricey GMB2100 on the bracelet version. They offer a $600 watch in a full metal case which weighs 180 grams with a well finished case but with a completely dark dial. It felt like it was a hole in the metal. I wanted to buy this model but when I've seen it in flesh I said no way. But the good news is G-Shock fixed this. They understood that they need to be inclusive as well and legible. So the new GM2100C is compliant from this point of view. The brand came up with a collection of three pastel colors which plays around with the tones offered, creating a pleasing colored composition which respects the color contrast of the elementary attributes of reading the time, which are contrast between the foreground and the hands, contrast between the foreground and the minute markers, a bit of loom, and a decent distributed light on a positive digital display. I personally love this collection because of the military appeal of each model. They are made either on tan, khaki or black tones, just like the modern military watches. And certainly they made Andre a very happy person, that's for sure. For this series, everything sits in the details. This model can be purposed as a military field watch if I'm thinking better. Once because it's a solid robust watch, it's colored in specific modern camouflage colors and because it does not have connectivity like radio, solar or bluetooth, so it cannot be detected behind the enemy lights. And yes, I personally avoid solar powered watches because all of them without exception remained without battery because I'm used to keep my wristwatches in watch boxes where there is not enough light to keep them charged. In my view it's quite a pain to keep alive solar watches, so why bother? So how did they succeed to make a legible watch? Well, they might have changed the architectural way to approach their creations. They made a clear priority in what is important for their user and when the user uses their product. So they established a hierarchy in tones, starting from the dark brushed base, followed by the weak indicator, then the digital display, followed by the minute markers, having the hands as the main point of interest of the dial, exactly as it should. And then I love how G-Shock chooses to differentiate the elements through tones. For instance, the dominant colors here are the metallic tone and then the sand tan tone of the strap followed by the dark black dial. All these tones have patterns, the radial brushing of the bezel, the rhythm of the tan fabric and the vertical brushing of the dial. 
And then I love how they bring the tan color on the loomed areas, on the logo, on the wall resistance label and on the weak indicator accent. And then how the case matches the minute markers and the tone of the digital display, leaving the hands outline in white to make sufficient contrast with the background color and the elements. I love the white light which accents pretty well the layout of the markers, if you wondered why the highly polished markers are angled. They are made to capture the 4 o'clock LED light. And I also like how the LED actions very well the backlight of the digital display. Everything feels more natural and more legible. The GM2100C comes, as I explained, with resin adapters towards the end lugs, which obviously serves at the ends of the lugs for the straps. These adapters, by the way, work with the GA series, but with the GM series as well. And this is not new for the brand, they made such iterations in the past with the square platform but definitely a new concept adapted to the Kasiok case. The excellent part is that on the wrist, because of the black adapters, it isolates the octagonal volume of the case and looks better on the wrist. The X factor is here the fabric strap. This type of strap is folded, which makes it more durable, but more comfortable as well. I love the stitching rhythm and the way it follows the surface of the fabric. The color of the strap is actually a tan towards khaki. In military acronyms it's called MJK, which is actually a khaki palette of colors, either towards sand or towards olive drab. A thing tailored and maintained by the US forces, once with the military actions in the Middle East. Now the thing that Andre completely misunderstood is the following. You have a design language, you came up with an octagonal faceted case with specific decorative G-Shock elements. Everything matches, even the fabric strap. But then when we look at the buckle and the retainers is, I don't know, completely from another movie. The dirty dozen Zulu-like buckle with metallic retainers doesn't work at all with the modern take of the GM series. For me it was a blue screen. I mean, I can appreciate the quirkiness of a Zulu strap coming from another planet. Now, there is a trade-off as usual, these resin adapters of the strap are too long, measuring 58mm as lug to lug. And as a result, on small wrists, the fabric strap will probably not fold vertically on the wrist. And before you decide to grab such a combo, check out your wrist surface and see how the strap will fall from a 58mm surface on the wrist downwards. As specifications, there are not big differences between the initial GM series and this one. The differences are clearly in legibility, but on the adapters per pose as well, which measure 58mm as lug to lug, which is not very good for smaller wrists. In diameter has 44.5mm, 11.5mm in height and weights 72 grams. Has 200m water resistance, has a Japanese movement inside and it's cased in Thailand. Funny, but actually inside we have the 5611 module. Overall Andre is pleased how he spent $320 on this watch both from Japan which went to the States and then to Eastern Europe. And as availability, this should get into the stores soon, I believe, so I encourage you to see the watch before you buy one, see if it works for you. As I personally encourage people to buy watches responsibly and to remain informed from YouTube videos, because YouTube is not a watch shop. Please keep in mind, I will explain you actually in another episode, what's the deal with the YouTube content. And in the end I want to wish you all the best and I'm curious what do you think about this GM2100C? Does it tick any boxes for you? Please let me know in the comments below. And as usual if you're new around, please consider subscribing for future episodes. Thank you very much, thanks for watching and until next time, be brave well, stay safe.